If you guys are trying to create your ultimate shop, if you feel like you're there, well, comments in the section, I guess you could just leave right now, but we wanna show you how this shop is doing it. You've probably heard of them if you've been in the water-based screen printing area or you've been to one of the trade shows, you've probably seen Danny Greninger um, bopping around, teaching people, showing people, and just opening his knowledge base. Danny started Denver Print House. He's now general manager there, but he's still running and creating an incredible business there. And he is going to join us today talking about creating the ultimate print shop. Bruce, how's it going, buddy? It's good. It's good. Thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. It's such an honor to be part of Print Hustlers this year. Um, let me check. Let me uh, try to take my uh, headphones off real quick. It's hard hearing myself talk. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, we can't hear you now. Can you hear me now? Yeah, there you go. All right. I guess we'll have to do it this way. Yeah. Can you guys hear me now? You're good. All right. Sorry. I was, I was having some difficulties hearing myself uh, with these big microphones on. So that's okay. It's, uh, it's one of those things. I'm not a professional uh, speaker out here. So bear with me on this. All right, guys. So uh, just want to get into this. Bruce, uh, thanks for having me be a part of Print Hustlers this year. I know it's a ton of work uh, from you and your team to keep this thing going. And, uh, so th thank you guys for having me be a part of this. Um, as you can see, I'm stuck in this boring little office here. I'd much rather be in uh, Chicago right now, uh, seeing all my friends, seeing you guys and, uh, being out there. I know my wife and kids, they really wanted to be in Chicago this year too. So it's, it's kind of a bummer, but Hey, we're going to make the best of it here. And, uh, you know, try to, uh, try to, just uh, get get as much out of it as we can. So thank you for uh, including me this year and uh, really looking forward to seeing all my friends at the next trade show. And, you know, I think that's one thing that I really miss about, uh, you know, the world that we're living in right now is at these trade shows, you get together, you have cocktails after the show, you talk shop, you just really, uh, you know, connect and learn what that ultimate print shop is, right? And uh, I think that's really what's helped me over the years is, you know, going to these shows and talking to people and just, uh, you know, sharing my experiences, learning what other people are doing out there. And uh, so, yeah, really miss that, you guys, but glad to be a part of it. Um, so, yeah, Bruce asked me to, to do a presentation on the Ultimate Print Shop. And I really got to thinking, what is that? You know, there's, there's so many different... Uh, people in the industry that are building such amazing shops right now. You know, you've got, you know, Jared out at Rockford Art Deli. That's such a, such a cool shop, what they're doing out there. You got Shirt Kong, you got the guys at New Buffalo. Um, you know, there's, there's Night Owls. There's just so many guys I could sit here and name probably a hundred different shops right now that to me, it's, you know, you could look at any of those guys and think they're the ultimate print shop, right? So what defines Denver Print House? What defines the ultimate print shop to me? Um, you know, it really boiled down to a few things. Uh, the first one was quality products. So having, a, having quality products to me, that was the most important thing that was going to set a benchmark and really allow us to, you know, get to the level that we can get quality customers, which is number two. Quality customers is number two. And number three to me for having that ultimate print shop is quality team members. So it really boiled down to quality products, quality customers, and quality team members. Um, you know, having those three things, that's uh, in, in, my mind, in my mind when I look back and think, you know, how can I build the ultimate print shop? What do I want out of my shop and DPH and that, you know, it was really those three things. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not really about, you know, having that 50 auto, 100 auto, you know, that might be the ultimate print shop to somebody, but that definitely wasn't the ultimate print shop to me. Um, you know, being able to have a product that I'm always super proud about and 
every single product that leaves the door here at DPH, I'm, I'm super pumped about that product makes me happy. It makes me excited. That was really the first step to uh, getting to where we're at. Um, a lot of people, they always ask, you know, how did you, how did you start producing these, you know, really high end simulated process and flocking and foiling and, you know, prints like that. And, you know, it really, uh, it, it started, you know, several years ago asking myself the whys and, you know, what type of clients do I want? What is my niche? What is my specialty and what makes me different? You know, so I started asking myself all that and, you know, trying to go out there and do research. I would get online and, you know, Rich Hoffman, former uh, president, CEO of m &R, he was a super, super great guy, always helpful. And, uh, you know, guys like him, guys like Joe Clark, they were always, you know, Sharon, go look at, go look at what, uh, Michelle's Mo Michelle Moxley's doing, go look at what John Weiss and Dave Gardner, what they're doing, go check out Kudre and Andy Anderson and, you know, the guys in Russia. So it, having Joe and Rich really, uh, you know, kind of opened my eyes to what's out there and what people are doing, um, you know, gave me a good insight of what I needed to do to be different. So, you know, it, it, it was really kind of just recognizing what they're doing and trying to figure out, you know, how can I maybe make it a little bit different? How can I make maybe make it a little bit better? How can I, uh, you know, look at what they're doing and, you know, maybe uh, adapt it to a different ink or, you know, a, a different market? And uh, so having those connections early on that really, uh, you know, kind of opened my eyes to what's out there. That was a huge part of the success that we have. Um, you know, I'll never forget. I had a, I had a, a, a really, really good buddy in high school that he, uh, he ended up starting, you know, 10 or 15 different types of companies over the years. And he always told me, you know, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to figure out what my competition is doing and I'm just going to do it a little bit better. And to me, that was, you know, that was eye opening at such a young age to uh, really understand that, to really do the research and figure out what big brands are doing, big, uh, you know, the, the best printers, the guys that are winning all the awards, the, you know, the shops that are developing for Nike, you know, you got Jamie McRae and those guys at Latitudes that, you know, they just do great, great work up there and really recognizing all the different people and what they're doing was such a huge advantage to me getting you know, getting DPH and, and our shop to that next level. So I think early on, you know, we really, really, really focused on creating the quality product. Um, you know, that for us, once we had the quality product, uh, the customers followed and then the team members followed. Uh, so, you know, early on it was, it was brutal, right? I mean, we were, we were spending 16 hours a day, 18 hours a day, testing emulsions, testing different inks, testing different meshes, testing different direct to screens, you know, really just trying to learn how we can be at that level of, uh, you know, the people in the industry that are producing the top quality products. Um, so a lot of R and D, I think in the early years is uh, one thing that was just really beneficial getting us to where we're at now. And, uh, you know, to this day, still, still, uh, I recommend to everybody try to devote some time to R and D, right. You know, you, you cannot get complacent in what you're doing in your shop because every, every time you turn around, you've got, you know, you got a guy in Houston that's doing water-based puff transfers and, then you got, you know, a new ink company like Virus that's coming out with an amazing special effect. So if you're not on your toes and you're not continually developing and trying to do R&D, you're never going to have that quality product. So I always really, really, really suggest to every shop out there. And for us, we spend a lot of time doing R&D work here, trying to create that really awesome product that we're proud of. Um, so once we, once we were able to do that, it, you know, things, things really started to snowball for us here. I think, uh, you know, one story that I always like to tell is one of our biggest clients to even, even to this day, it took about nine months for me to secure that client. But the one thing 
that was able that was able to really bring them in and secure them was our quality. Um, so you know they were they're a Colorado-based company. I I don't want to say who they are, um, but they do a lot of really high end, a lot of high retail work. They work with a lot of the biggest brands in the world. And, you know, I, I think I stopped by their office someday, you know, hit them up, dropped off a couple samples, really just wanted to uh, let them know that if they ever wanted uh, or needed another screen printer in the area to uh, hit us up. And, you know, it took, I think almost nine or 10 months of, you know, I would email them once or twice a week. I would give them a call maybe once a month. Um, occasionally I'd stop by their office and, uh, you know, that, that nine or 10 month mark hit and they called me up one day and they said, our current, uh, screen printer, they're, they're working on a job and they just don't have what it takes to execute this job. It's for one of our biggest high name clients. Would you be willing to take on the job for us? And I said, absolutely bring the job down. Uh, so they brought the job down. It was, I think, close to a thousand shirts, simulated process, uh, really, really hard separation to, you know, pull the colors out. There was some skin tones in there. There was uh, a lot of uh, neon looking colors that faded into the shirt. And, uh, you know, I knew at that point, this is exactly what I've prepared for, for the last four or five years of just grinding and testing emulsions and testing all that different stuff, because I know when I get a job like this, we're going to crush it. And, uh, so, you know, they, they gave us the job, we executed the job and their client ended up getting the job and it was a huge music, uh, client. And they called us back and they said, where did you get? this printing done. This is the best printing that we've ever seen. And from that point on that secured a seven figure or close to a seven figure a year client for us at that time, which really kind of got us to that next level. So having that, you know, quality product and, and the execution that we could give them something that we're really proud of and they can take to their client and their clients super pumped about, that's really what started bringing in clients to DPH. Um, once we started getting those high name clients, it was, it was almost a snowball effect with people that wanted to work for us. Um, so some of the best designers in the business, one of, uh, one of my best buddies, Jeremy Duncan, he, he's been, uh, you know, with me from, you know, several years now. And the reason why he loves working with DPH is just because he can trust our quality. He knows when he sends us a really amazing, you know, he might have 50 or 60, 70 hours in one design. And he knows when he sends it up here, we're going to take the time and we put in the time to really be able to execute that well. Um, so, you know, really kind of going back and circling back to that quality product, it's not only brought in a lot of clients to DPH, but it's brought in a lot of team members. And that's, uh, you know, I think that's one thing that, you know, we need to really talk about a lot as far as building the ultimate print shop is the people. So, I mean, I think that's, uh, you know, that's, that's one thing that everybody needs to recognize. I think for myself, I recognized, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not the best people person, right? I'm not the best uh, communicator with people. Um, I'm a really good printer. I'm a really good separator. I'm really good at building processes and, you know, figuring out how to develop that quality product. But, you know, let's face it, I'm not the best at uh, working with people on the floor or maybe facing direct to the client. So, you know, understanding your strong points, understanding the people that you surround yourself with is so key to really, uh, you know, building that ultimate print shop. And, uh, you know, so just, you know, the people that we've been able to bring in here, the people um, that we work with on a day-to-day -day, day -day basis, that's really what's, uh, you know, in my mind, gotten us to, uh, you know, a level where we're trying to build that ultimate print shop. You know, I, I, I don't think we're anywhere near the ultimate print shop here, but, you know, the, the people that, you know, come in and they work day in and day out, they, they love their jobs, they enjoy their jobs. And, uh, you know, we're so, we're so about, creating a better work environment for the people and a quality of life here 
And I think that's one thing that, you know, once you get the quality product going, once you get the quality customers going, really try to focus in on all those things in your facility that make it better for people to work. Um, so for us here, that was really, you know, kind of relying on heavy automation. Um, as many people follow us on Instagram and know we're, uh, you know, we're kind of known for having all the latest, you know, cool toys and machines and pre-press, post-press. And, uh, you know, really it's, you know, it's, 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 it's great to have those, but the biggest reason why we bring those things in is not to replace jobs. It's just to make the jobs here much better for the people that are working. Um, you know, I think you, you go into a, a typical screen print shop and you walk into the reclaim department and it's like, holy cow, what is going on in here? It's, you know, there's emulsion up the wall. It's disgusting. You can't breathe. You just smell chemicals. Um, it's, it's not a environment that really anybody would ever say, I want to work in this environment. I want to make a career out of this. Um, and you know, so we, we really started trying to hone in on, uh, you know, the quality of life and the equipment that we can bring in to really enhance that for the people that work here. Um, and I think, you know, that, that is so key is just surrounding yourself with great people and, uh, recognizing your strengths, your weaknesses, really, uh, you know, what, what, uh, positives that you can bring to the print shop, because really, you know, there's, there's not going to be any ultimate print shop that runs with one person out there. And, uh, you know, I think recognizing that, recognizing that the people that are there is, uh, you know, it's, it, it's so key to what, what we're all trying to do to, uh, you know, get to that next level. Um, sorry, I'm going through my notes here, guys. Um, so, you know, the, the, the one thing that, you know, I want, I want to leave everybody with, um, is, uh, you know, don't be afraid to uh, break the rules. I think that was one thing that, you know, really helped me throughout this period of trying to build the, the print shop was, you know, don't, don't just uh, let some ink rep or some, you know, machine rep come into your shop and say, Hey, I've been printing for, you know, 30 years and I know everything. And, you know, if you, if you want to, you know, print something that looks you know, super colorful, you have to do it this way. Or if you want to achieve, uh, you know, water-based discharge, you have to do it this way. Um, yeah, I think, I think that was one thing that really helped me out was just understanding that, you know, I can break those rules. I don't have to listen to, to everything that, you know, a, a rep comes in and says when, you know, th this industry is, what's fun about it is you've got the artistic side and then you have the technical side. So you have somebody that, you know, is the most amazing artist. They can take, um, you know, two different colors and blend it on press. And you're like, holy smokes, how did you get that? That is, that is so amazing. And then you have on the flip side, you have, you know, somebody that's so technical and they can tell you, you know, if, if you want those two colors to blend together, uh, you, you need, you know, a red shade blue and you need a yellow shade this, you know, it's, so having the industry where there's artistic, there's scientific, it makes it so fun to where you can blend that together and really there's no rules, right? So I think that's one thing that I really want to leave with people is, uh, you know, don't be, don't be scared to break the rules. Don't be scared to uh, go out of your comfort zone and, uh, you know, try new things. There's, uh, there's so much opportunity out there with, you know, learning new techniques and learning uh, new ways of doing, you know, different uh, full color graphics or water-based printing or sim process and flocks and foils and hybrid printing. But, you know, just uh, if somebody tells you something, take it, take it, learn it, learn uh, from it, apply it in your shop and, uh, you know, break some of those rules once in a while. And, uh, so there's, uh, there's five rules that I, I want to leave everybody with today um, that really, um, I, you know, I think it, it got us and DPH to the level that we feel, uh, you know, super comfortable with, with our clients, with our employees, with our processes. 
And uh, those five rules are this. Um, so number one rule is surround yourself with the right people. Number two is create a product you're always proud of. I think it's key that you're always proud of the product, guys. Um, you know, every, every day I come into the facility here and, you know, we're constantly trying to get better. We're constantly trying to make our product that much better than the guy down the street or the guy that's selling, uh, you know, 50 million shirts to Nike and Under Armour and Target every year. Um, so just always, always be proud of the product that you're putting out, create a working environment that promotes higher quality of life. Um, you know, that, I think that's, I think that's the biggest thing, honestly, in this list to, uh, you know, building that ultimate print shop is creating an environment that people want to work in, create an environment, create processes that people strive on and people, um, they have ownership and they have accountability on. Um, you know, I'm a, like, like I said, I'm, I'm a great printer, but I'm not the best at working with people on the floor. So, you know, we recognize that at DPH, we've hired a really good production manager, Ryan, you're out there. Um, and, uh, he works really great with the people on the floor here and he works really great with me. So having that, that dynamic of an environment that, uh, promotes, you know, people really working well together, that is key. Um, for continually, and create your processes. Always try to improve your processes. Um, you know, I know you guys are going to hear from Lon tomorrow. Lon is, he's an amazing guy out there. That's, um, you know, another guy that, you know, growing, growing kind of up in this industry and building, you know, starting the shop with one manual and, you know, no money in my pocket and getting it to where we are now is, uh, you know, guys like Lon. I've, uh, you know, I have a ton of respect for him and, uh, so when he gets up here tomorrow and starts talking about processes, guys, listen to him because that's really, you know, going back to figuring out what he's doing and maybe trying to take it my own, you know, take my own spin on that, try to make it a little bit better in my own way. That's really what's helped get us to that next level. Um, and five, going back, don't be afraid to break the rules. Uh, you know, that's that's so key. Like I said, we're we're in an industry that has so much artistic free will. And, uh, you know, there's, there's really endless possibilities of what we're dealing with. We're, we're able to, uh, take a concept in our heads and put it down on fabric. And it's, it, it's such an awesome thing. And, uh, you know, just don't let people tell you, you have to do it a certain way because there's 10 million ways to do, you know, that same thing. And my way it's, it's, it might not always be the right way. Your way might not always be the right way, but what works for you is what you need to do. So, have fun out there, break the rules, and uh, keep on printing. Thanks so much, Danny. I really appreciate that, and especially being honest about it. I got a couple questions for you. Um, what What would you say are some stumbling blocks that you've hit when trying to achieve these goals? Yeah, I mean uh, – you know, there's, there's so much failures out there, right? I mean, I think the first, uh, I mean, I, I have so many stories of us ruining product, just going through so many different trial and errors of, you know, we think that uh, this is the right way to do it, or, you know, we just didn't even know any better, right? So I think, uh, you know, for us, it was never giving up, just always understanding that, hey, we're, you know, as, as much as we think we're great and we're always striving to be the best, we're going to make tons of mistakes. And, you know, a lot of times our mistakes actually end up creating something that we never thought, or it ends up uh, creating a product that we're like, holy smokes, this is so awesome. Sure. Um, so I think, uh, you know, you've got to fail to get to that next step for sure. What Do you have an exa a specific example that you could share that, that maybe you remember? Oh man. Uh, I probably have like a thousand examples. Um, I mean, you know, one, one example that, that we were doing, I was trying to create an HD, um, God, what was it? It was an HD metallic print. And we started playing with a lot of, uh, foils and, you know, different, different, uh, types of treatments to go on that HD. 
And uh, when we were when we were we were totally just failing, right? Like we we couldn't we could not get the HD to loft the, the way that we wanted to. Um, it was just almost a disaster the way this whole R and D project came out. And we had a sales rep that was walking through the shop, and he was like, "Oh my goodness, that looks so cool! Do you think I can take that and go show it to the client?" And we're like, "No, this this is so." far from what we were trying to accomplish. It looks so mm -hmm. bad. We hate this. We don't want to give this to any client out there. And just the, the perception that that sales rep had, he saw a product that we didn't quite see and he took it, sold it to, uh, sold it to his client. And it was one of the most popular shirts that we've ever done to this day. So mm -hmm. I think in our eyes and the guys on the shop floor, we failed miserably but in somebody else's eye in our company, you know, they saw a home run and it ended up being a home run for us. And really just, you know, kind of going back to surrounding yourself with the right people. That's, you know, that's one thing that was so key to that was, you know, we didn't see it, but they saw it and it ended up working out for us. Got it. Interesting. Thanks for sharing that. Um, when you were smaller, and you had, you know, you got so many other things to do. You didn't have all the departments and the right people. How did you allocate the time or maybe just find the time to spend on so much R&D and improving the product while keeping the lights on and selling jobs, right? And, and bring people in training and all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think to this day, we still, uh, we still have a really good relationship with the clients and that we do have. And that that allows us to do a lot of R and D as we're doing their, you know, their normal jobs. Um, so we're continually doing R and D on just normal day to day jobs and our client, we've got, you know, like I said, they've got a good understanding. We go to the client and we say, Hey, are you guys willing to let us play around with this? Or, you know, if, if we come up with a new technique on this job, are you guys, uh, are you guys okay with that? And most of the clients, they come to us because, because of those techniques, because of the flocks and the foils and the water-based printing and all the cool stuff that, you know, we're able to give them. So I think for us, it's, it's continually just, you know, we would love to have the time to say, we're going to take two hours of our, our day every day to R and D. The fact is most print shops, they don't have that. So we're continually doing R and D on just normal jobs, if that makes sense. Got it. So literally testing on the first few prints and improving the process before running it. Yeah. To, to give you guys a, a, a more specific example of that. So lately we've been, uh, we've been running a lot of ink from uh, Aquarius. So the, the former poly one company and uh, you know, so we'll have a job set up with maybe six or eight different colors on it. When that job is done, we'll take all the ink out of the screen and then we'll swap uh, new ink, you know, into that. So we might do that three or four different times, you know, once that, that job is done, or we might do it before we start the job. So before we start that job, like we just did it a couple weeks ago where we had a simulated process. It was a really colorful full front fish that we were printing. So before we started the job, I got together with a team and we said, what inks do we want to use on this? And they said, uh, let's, let's play around with it. So what we ended up doing is we tried three different inks on the job and then we, we all got together, we compared the samples and we said, this is the one that we want. And that's the one that we ended up printing for the client. So sometimes we'll do it beforehand and then sometimes we'll do it on the back end of the job, just depending on our scheduling at that, at that time. Got it. That makes sense. You also talked about a lot about quality team members. Um, Somebody mentioned in the comments that we all have a Martin, which the Martin was the people uh, analyzer from Tom's example who didn't necessarily check all the core values boxes. How do you try to help sift through that? You know, sometimes you try to get through that in the interview process and to, to weed it out. Sometimes they do make it in and they are part of the shop because you may just have to need somebody at the time. You know, how do you try to keep that out so you get that quality team? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a pretty difficult, uh, you know, idea that, you know, keeping that perfect culture in your shop, it's, it's, uh, it's really hard to maintain that, but, you know, again, we've, we've brought in a few people that, 
you know, they, they just work really, really well with people. When, when a mistake comes up, you know, I think, uh, you know, to my own fault and, you know, it's, it's an ongoing thing that I'm always working on myself is how do I handle that situation when it comes up? Right. Sure. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, understanding that, you know, at the end of the day, the person and the people are so much more important than a t-shirt or, you know, what we're printing on the t-shirt and having that at the top of our priority list and core values is really what helps us as a company deal with, you know, if we, hi if we make a bad hire, yeah, it sucks letting that person go. But at the end of the day, they're still a person and we still try to navigate that as best as we can. Um, and everybody that we have here, they certainly appreciate that. And we've brought in, you know, I think, I think it's key to make some of those key hires of, you know, the people that are on the floor, they're working with people, they're, they're, you know, day to day, like, you know, for an example, our production manager that's running our floor, he's such a good guy that puts people ahead of, I guess, uh, the product. And, you know, I was always a guy that I'm putting the product I'm, I'm, you know, I want the best product. And he is like, we got to have the best people to do it. So having him and I really work with those people. And if we bring somebody in and they're not a great hire, he's really good at, you know, either changing their mindset and working with them, giving them a different position in the company, or, you know, sometimes we have to part ways with that person, but it's typically for the best. It's, um, you know, it's, it's better for them and it's better for us. But Ryan, he's been so key in just recognizing that for our company. Um, and I, I think that's one thing that's, you know, just really important is having people that, you know, they, they, they recognize the, the feelings that people have. And, uh, you know, they're always looking at that ahead of, you know, the job that we have, I guess. You, you know, you brought up a couple things that are actually very uh, similar to a chapter in the traction book called delegate and elevate where you have the right people that you can give roles and responsibilities to, which elevates you to do more important things, which elevates them and the business as a whole. What did you have to teach yourself that, right? Because when you start, you're doing everything and it's hard to let go and be able to trust and, and be able to push that. But it seems you've really found the fact that I love the printing, I love the aspect of it, I love the chemistry of it. And this person loves sales, this person loves operations and so on. Yeah, I mean, it. you know, I think, you know, for myself, it was just, uh, you know, getting to that point to where I think you mature as a person and you realize, you know, I think when I first started the Denver Print House and I was, you know, 18 or 19 years old and I was looking at, you know, I wanna build this, you know, crazy big shop. And, you know, it was really, uh, you know, my ambitions were I'm going to do this on my own. I've got, you know, a few people, my brother helped me, my wife helped me, you know, my family was there. I had a few people that were helping me kind of get to that next level. Um, but really, uh, you know, taking that, that, that self-reflection and realizing, Hey, I'm not really good at all that stuff. I'm not really good at sales. I'm not really good at, uh, you know, I'm not the best HR person. I'm not the, I'm not the best at, uh, you know, interacting face to face. And I really enjoy the printing. I really enjoy the development. I really enjoy creating that ultimate product for a client to go sell to their client. Um, so I think for me, it was just that, you know, maturing, getting, getting out of my early twenties and realizing I can't do everything on my own. Um, and I, I think I'm, you know, even today, I, I, I still am continually, uh, you know, getting better at that. And I think that's, uh, you know, one thing that all the guys out there that I really respect and the, the women out there that I really respect in the industry, they're really good at recognizing what they're good at. Right. And uh, I think I think that's one thing that, you know, my takeaway from a lot of this is, um, you know, surround yourself with the right people and really understand your, you know, your your pros and your cons, whether that's good and whether that's bad. Um, in order to get to that ultimate print shop, you really have to reflect and, you know, get down to that level. We had a last couple of questions here. Danny, Brandy asks, how many people do you have now? And then Mike asks, what sort of inks are you guys switching in between? So on the first, the first question, um, so our, our company's evolved into a pretty, uh, 
pretty interesting uh, small factory, I guess you I guess you would call it. Um, when I sold the company about three years ago, my two partners that took it over, uh, they owned a factory in Guatemala. So when we essentially took on, you know, we merged both of these companies together. I think our employee count, you know, if we're definitely probably between that 50 and 75 uh, employees right now. If you look at, you know, the factories that we work with overseas that we also manage and operate, and then um, our factory here in Denver, we've got, we, we typically have close to 50 people in it. Um, we, we try to stay around that number. Um, so we're not, by any means, we're not a huge company. There's a lot of places I go into and I'm like, this is crazy how big this company is. There's a hundred autos here. And uh, so, you know, some people look at us as a big shop. I look at us as a pretty small shop. Um, I like to keep it that way, but yeah, we've got about 50 employees here. And then uh, the second question, as far as inks. Uh, so, you know, we, we run so many different types of inks here, whether it's on that particular fish job, I think we started with, um, it was a discharge under base with a soft base, water base on top. Um, once we tried that, we went to a traditional high solids um, under base with a high solids on top. And then our third variation on that particular design, we went to, it was a hybrid base with a high mesh water base on top. So, I mean, it's the high mesh, you know, obviously those inks, they travel, they're, they're ground, they're made to go through high mesh better than, uh, some of the higher solid inks, the higher solid inks have a little bit more opacity to them. Um, so, you know, we, we're always constantly R and Ding. some jobs we might run, uh, a couple high solid inks combined with a couple high mesh inks because we're trying to get a different blend or we're trying to get a different level of opacity. Um, so that's one thing that's super, super fun. One thing that I'm going to be doing is launching a, a series called chasing inks. That's going to be all about you know, what we're doing here at DPH, the inks we're using, the emulsion that we're using, uh, you know, really just taking a, a job from start to finish and showing people how we do that, how our process handles that. And uh, we're going to go tour a bunch of different shops. We're going to go visit a bunch of friends and really make it kind of a fun little industry related trade show. Um and, you know, once, once we start doing that, we're going to get into that nitty gritty kind of details of, uh, you know, all the different types of inks and the why that we use those inks and that kind of fun stuff. That's exciting. Awesome. Thanks so much, Danny. What do you think? Last question is Denver Print House. What's next? What are you guys looking forward to in the future? So right now it's, it's, uh, it's interesting you say that we're, we're so locked into this whole digital deal right now. Um, we've actually got a uh, buck from rock. He's in the back of the shop right now working on our hybrid. Um, so rock's got a hybrid that we're installing on one of our round presses here. And then we're, uh, then we're putting one of the rock nows in later this year. Um, so that's going to be really getting into that uh, on demand print one shirt at a time uh, you know, ship it direct to the client and as quick as possible. So as far as DPH goes, we're super locked in on this whole new transition to digital. We're really excited about, uh, you know, showing, showing some of these, uh, awesome techniques with flocking and foiling and hybrid all combined together. Uh, we've been working with poly one a lot lately on a lot of specialty ink products. Um, you know, we're really playing around with a lot of the, the pearls and color shifts and different type of pigments that, uh, you know, do some really, really cool, crazy stuff. And, uh, so yeah, that's, that's, that's what DPH is on is that digital, uh, you know, that digital train and, uh, you know, just, just trying to do the best we can. Right. I mean, we're all about sustainability. We're all about, you know, trying to be a little bit greener out there and, uh, you know, putting out that best quality product. So awesome. Thanks so much. I really appreciate joining us, Danny.